the story of our flag. It was a sunny June morning in the year 1776. A soft breeze blew through the open window of a small sewing shop on Arch Street in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Betsy Ross, a young widow, sat in her shop busily sewing on, and sewing on a covering for a chair. For the past year, the 13 colonies of America had been at war with England, and even though Philadelphia was just a small town in 1776, it was indeed a busy place. All day long, horses clopped back and forth on the cobblestone streets, pulling carriages and wagons. And suddenly there was a knock on the door of the shop, and Betsy Ross put down her sewing. She straightened the white cap she wore on her on her head, and she opened the door, and her eyes grew wide in surprise. Standing outside were three men. One was Colonel George Ross, Betsy's uncle. One was Robert Morris, whom she had known since she was a little girl. And the third man was a very tall and had a friendly, uh, had friendly blue eyes. It was General George Washington, the leader of the American Army. And Betsy curtsied as she invited the men inside and took them into the tiny parlor in back of the sewing shop. There is something we would like you to do, said Colonel Ross, as General Washington unfolded a large sheet of paper. Could you make a flag like the one in this drawing, asked General Washington. And Betsy looked at the picture of the flag and with 13 stripes and 13 stars, and she said, I have never made a flag before, but I would be glad to try it. For a long, long time, I have wanted one flag for all the colonies, said George Washington. Some men carry a rattlesnake flag that says, don't tread on me. And men from Rhode Island carry a white flag with a blue anchor on it. Other men from the north have their own pine tree flag. And men from South Carolina have a blue banner with a silver crescent on it. Last year, a group of men decided that there should be just one flag for all the 13 colonies, said General Washington. Benjamin Franklin helped design the new flag, and it was very beautiful, but it looked too much like the uh, flag of England. You see, added General Washington, we want a flag of our very own, one that everybody will know is American. And as soon as the men had gone, Betsy went to the cupboard. She brought out red, white, and blue bunting, and then she studied the design and started to work. Now, very carefully, she sewed the red and white stripes together, and very, very carefully, she cut the 13 white stars and sewed them in a circle on the field of blue. When evening came, she lit uh, candles and went on working. It was late when she went to bed, but early the next morning, she was hard at the work again. That afternoon, when Colonel Ross and Robert Morris came to the shop, the flag was finished. It is beautiful, said Colonel Ross. You have done a good job, Betsy Ross, said Robert Morris. It is a flag that will make America proud. And it was a flag that made America proud. For a year later, on June 14, 1777, Congress voted to make the Stars and Stripes the national flag of America. And ever since that June 14th has been known as Flag Day. The Revolutionary War went on for many more years. All during the war, Betsy Ross made flags for the Army and Navy. And other people made them too. And the Stars and Stripes waved proudly over ships that sailed the ocean. And men from all the 13 colonies carried the Stars and Stripes in battles against the English. The Revolutionary War ended in 1783, and America did not belong to England anymore. The 13 colonies joined together and became a brand new nation called the United States of America. And as America grew and each new state was added to the Union, a new star was added to the flag. But the 13 red and white stripes standing for the original colonies are still the same today. There is a star for Delaware, the first state to join the Union. And there is a star for Maine <coughs> with its forest of pine trees. There is a star for Pennsylvania with its roaring steel mills. A star for Alabama with its wide fields of cotton. And a star for Wisconsin on the shores of Lake Michigan. <coughs> a star for Texas with its great herds of cattle, and a star <clears throat> for Colorado, the home of the high mountains. For every state in the north, the south, the east, and the west, there was a star on the American flag. Now there are two more white stars on the field of blue. One is for Alaska in the faraway Northland, and one is for Hawaii many miles away from the Pacific Ocean. 
If Betsy Ross were alive today, she would be proud of the flag with its 13 stripes and its 50 stars. And perhaps she would be even more proud than she was on that day in 1776 when she made a flag for America when it was very, very young. <laughs>